Good day, good day, good day, and welcome to another episode of Drew's Book Reviews. Let's talk about Wheel of Time, Season 2, my initial thoughts, four episodes in. Let's talk about that's coming up here on Drew's Book Reviews. Good day, good day, good day. So let's talk about Wheel of Time, Season 2. So, so far, this has probably been... It seems one of the most controversial adaptations amongst the fan base of a beloved book series into a TV show and we are now into season two so let's talk about it so of course also don't forget to hit that like button comment and subscribe I'd love to hear your thoughts on this if you've been watching along I do want to pre preface this video there's gonna be spoilers in this video if you haven't seen the TV show not so much for the books I have to admit because it seems that the TV show was kind of based on the books but not really the storyline at least the storyline is not being executed in the same way we see in the books with the same path of development for our characters but let's get into that and let's talk about it so i just want to touch on a few things that uh i, I i'm enjoying about this second season because there's a lot of negativity about the uh, adaptation and understandably so but i just kind of want to focus on the things that i'm enjoying about season two so far the wheel of time now i will say the first episode of wheel of time I found was a little bit slow in its pacing. Uh, it definitely was kind of feeling like it was setting it up for the rest of the season with uh, Moraine and Lan being uh, away from the White Tower and of course being banished from the White Tower and Moraine having lost her powers being cut off from the one source and Lan trying to understand her and trying to work with Moraine but the division between the two is growing. And you can see the toll it's taken on Moraine and the frustration that Lan has had. The feeling like the partnership that they've had for the past 20 years is just gone. And I like to see how that developed. Now, I know some people feel uh, that it maybe was a little bit childish after some of the reviews that I've seen as far as how that relationship was portrayed. But I do think that having that growing tension in there, uh, I kind of enjoyed seeing how that was starting to develop within this version of the wheel of time anyway because as we know it is not exactly following what we see in the books themselves which for me is okay i'm actually okay with that for the most part um because i have, i've always viewed screen adaptations of being a different version of the same story and i think that's really important to keep in mind with adaptations but like i said it's still understandable why some people are having a hard time with that and I totally get that and that's totally fine but that is kind of my view so that was kind of episode one I really kind of like to see that tension building as it kind of sets it up for further plot development down the road or as we see Lana and Moraine go their separate ways uh eventually it's kind of the feeling I'm getting from the show at this point point. and then we also have some other developments within the series that I'm really enjoying as well and of course the introduction of Celine uh so Rand's girlfriend basically and their relationship and how that's starting to get woven in together now there's not a lot of context in the first intro to Celine within the tv show fans of the book know who Celine is they understand the context from that the tv show is just kind of Rand is in this place working at an insane asylum and Karian I believe he's in uh at an insane asylum and he's with Celine Nobody really knows who Celine is, at least if you haven't read the books, you don't know who Celine is. I'm glad they kind of kept her character as far as the, who she was and is within the TV show. I'm glad that they kept that there for sure. But that development there and that relationship, how Rand is just trying to live a life and be away from everything that's been going on. He doesn't want to be the Dragon Reborn. He doesn't want to have these powers. He doesn't want to go insane. And Celine there is kind of their manipulating him essentially towards eventual end goals as we soon discover of course and again like i said at the beginning of this video some spoilers if you haven't watched the show that Celine is actually Lanfear, one of the forsaken and one of the most powerful forsaken at that now i will say with moraine coming in and taking her out as far as her being a forsaken goes uh i felt that that was like really quick uh and probably not quite how i would have liked to have seen that develop and that come to light but it was pretty much boom i think people go i think for fans of the book we already knew who she was but for those who are not fans of the book i think that having that true boom she's a forsaken she's landfear and it just coming out like that uh so far in the season just right out of the blue 
is not, I think doesn't really help with the plot development so much. I'm not sure what I'm trying to say. I mean, I don't know if what I'm saying making sense, but I'm sure you could tell me down in the comments below. But yeah, it just kind of came out of nowhere. And I think for someone who hasn't read the books, I'm not sure that the context was effectively delivered on who Lanfear was, what the Forsaken necessarily were, and just it developing so quick to Moraine coming in and killing but not killing her because of course she can't kill the Forsaken. So I don't know, we'll see how that develops down the road for sure. Uh, one of the other aspects though that I did feel was done really well so far in the second season is the arches and Nynaeve's test to become accepted and the trials that she had to go through and the things that she feared most and having to deal with the trauma and the stress that the archers presented to her. I liked how that was done and I thought it was done really well in terms of her personal trials and how it all worked out and what she feared and the life that she lived in that alternate version of reality that she had to deal with. I really enjoyed that. I thought it was done well. I like how that was done and it was just done well, I don't know how to say it. it was done well, and I think that was portrayed reasonably accurate to what we experienced in the books overall. Uh, I mean, I don't remember the book deal specifically is what she went through through the arches and the specific details, but I thought overall, I think that part at least was relatively true to the books and had the feel of what it needed to be for the arches. And I look forward to seeing eventually a Gwen's trial to be come accepted as well, come to light there. And with that, and then at the Tower of the White Tower, we also have the introduction of Elaine Tracond. And I think she was portrayed really well. I always had this vision, like this British type monarch uh, for for Elaine Tracond and the British princess. And she, I think that was portrayed really well in her characterization within this book or within this uh, TV show so far as well. And I liked how the relationship began begins between Egwene and Elaine and how that friendship develops. And I think so far they're setting that up quite well and I'm really enjoying how that's going so far. As far as the introduction of Elaine goes uh, to Egwene and the royalty of Kaharan and all that kind of stuff, I think that that was doing pretty well uh, overall. And then when it comes to Hopper, this is one of the aspects I love most about the TV show so far, the Wolf Pack and Hopper. And as we're starting to see more development of Perrin as a wolf brother come to light in the TV show, we're starting to see his relationship start to build with the wolves. And I love how they introduce that. And when it comes to the wolves and the wolf brother and the mentorship that we have there, Perrin's hero's journey, honestly, in the story in the Wheel of Time is one of my favorites. I mean, of course there is Rand, but Perrin has his own hero's journey story arc in there. I mean, all, all the Two Rivers folk do. I mean, Matt does, uh, Egwene does, Nanive does, Perrin. Uh, Rand, they all have a kind of their hero's journey throughout the story of the whole epic arc of the Wheel of Time, but I really like how this is being developed so far as far as Perrin's hero's journey into becoming a wolf brother. I like how that's happening and how his mentor Elias is there guiding him. Now one thing I really like about Elias and what's happening with Elias is how they kind of combine Huron the Sniffer uh, and, and Elias into a single character. I have to admit I really like that creative choice for the TV show. There are so many characters in the Wheel of Time. I don't think it's realistic to include them all, but some of these characters, even these minor characters, have kind of an important role. And I think this is one combination of characters, having Elias, the wolf brother, as a sniffer. As we all know, dogs have an extremely keen, effective sense of smell. So it makes sense in terms of a creative choice of which characters are going to combine. And I think they did a really good job with that, combining Elias with uh, here in the sniffer and, and also being that wolf brother. I love that creative choice I love the portrayal of Elias in general, and I think that is done really well I love the mentorship going on there and how that's all coming together with parents starting to come into who he is and What he is to eventually become and of course we can't have this video without talking about the Sean Chan invasion and how we've got the course the forsaken with the Sean Chan and they're coming to the shores and the portrayal of their characterization of these brutal sea invasion invaders coming into the world as we know it to reconquer the land uh, that was abandoned or left by Archer Hawkwind's armies in the distant past and how they're coming to reclaim what they believe to be theirs uh, and this is just getting started as we see the Sanchan come in here and how they basically force those to submit to their will in places that they've conquered and this is only just the beginning. 
and I am really looking forward to seeing how that develops. I, I really like the portrayal of them and how they're using their wind finders and their, and their magic users, which I guess aren't quite Aes Sedai, but the magic and as part of that, the leadership presented by the Shan Chan or, or how their leadership structure is so far really liking how it's all done. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how that further develops within this story and how they kind of execute the whole Wheel of Time plot because definitely changes are to be expected. But ultimately, just because something has changed from what we see in the books and how it develops doesn't necessarily make it a bad change in and of itself. And I think overall, season two so far is becoming a pretty good improvement upon season one. And I look forward to maybe at the end of the season, once all the episodes are out, I might kind of do like a final Wheel of Time season two video. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that develops throughout the rest of the season. Overall, I have to say, I am really enjoying season two of the Wheel of Time and I hope I continue to enjoy it and I hope I continue to see how much better it, it gets throughout the rest of the season. And I'm really looking forward to that. So with that in mind, you know, please let me know what you thought down below. I'd love to hear from you. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'd love to hear from you. And of course, Thank you so much for watching. All my social links are down below. I've got Discord, I've got Threads, Instagram, Hardcover, all that's linked down below. And I hope you're having yourself a great day. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, until next time, keep on reading. Bye.